Hello folks, I'm not quite at it again, but what I thought I might do is do a little series um, of videos about hemp fishing. It's um, something I've done a lot of, um, and um, I'd say I was relatively competent at doing it. It does have a few nuances and for a lot of people it's something that they um, have perhaps tried and, and maybe not done so well or, or haven't tried at all simply because they don't quite know um, how you need to prepare your baits and how you need to essentially tie your rigs. Um, Pole fishing is by far the best way of doing it, where you, you can fish it on a waggler and you can fish it on a whip. Um, but both of those methods give you a, a lot less control um, over your rig and presentation. And on average or hard days, those elements are key. If they're really having it, then whip fishing or waggler fishing can be very effective but normally you need a, you need a long pole, a short line uh, so you can be in control of your your rig effectively. Uh, I think the first thing I'll do is do a, do a prep video of just how to prep hemp. Uh, it's relatively simple but you do have to get your timing right to essentially maximise the number of hookable grains you've, you've got in your um, bait box. Otherwise you're, you're searching around, if you overcook it, you're searching around for ones that are actually going to stay on the hook. Um, and there's also another couple of baits that are used in conjunction with hemp. Um, those are tares. Tares are kind of like a little, small, very small bean, almost like a lentil. Um, they have their own advantages in that they're easy, easy to hook. Uh, they quite often won't fall off if you miss a bite, whereas normal hemp, if you miss a bite on hemp, nine times out of ten, you've got to ship in and bait up again, and that's quite a laborious process. Um, tears will also pick up the odd bonus fish that they might outfish hemp for bites some days um, so it's always worth having a little pot of them I just take a little tub like a little pellet tub with a hundred or so maybe 200 baits in there um, and may or may not use them depending on what the fish want fish roach they tell you what you what they want um, so when, you, when you're fishing, um, if you're not consistently hitting bites, you, you, you need to change something. Um, you do get the old days when there's a lot of small fish around and they might often bump or can't get the grains in their mouths. So you get a lot of bites that are real like that. Um, they're not they're not really bites. They're like sort of like small fish and, and liners and dips and things like that. And a, a classic a classic hemp bite. You, you lay the rig in. Um, I'm talking about usually fishing on on a on a river. You lay the rig in and follow it down, and it will just slide away if they're confidently feeding that doesn't always happen sometimes you'll be you'll be inching your float through you get a little dip you hold it it might dip again it might dip a bit more and you strike and you're there um, I say other days when they're really going for it good put the rig in it'll get over your bait You've been feeding, it was sail away. Um, the other bait well worth using is wheat. Just normal 
wheat um, like they make bread from and that's uh, just a grain prep is very simple uh, it's, it's similar to prepping tares and, and pressing, prepping hemp but they all have their own little um, idiosyncrasies um, wheat's a good one again it can pick up bonus fish it's very much like tares sometimes the bites might be slower but the fish might be bigger other times you might just be hitting more bites and again quite often it, it will stay on the hook for two or three missed bites I mean, you don't want to be missing three bites in a row but it does happen um, so we'll, we'll look at prepping those as well I don't know whether I'll make them into like a series of sort of one two three videos or put them all in one I haven't decided yet and then we'll probably have a look at a fairly sort of typical rig that I use for hemp fishing on a slow medium sort of five to ten foot deep river swim um, so we'll crack on with that and then once I've done them I'll take those prepared baits we'll go down the River Thames we'll take the camera we'll get all set up properly and we'll have a at least a morning roach fishing uh, I went down a week or so ago it was okay it was it was the fish were hard earned they weren't really on it you really had to work for the bites your presentation had to be absolutely cock on but yeah I did end up end up with a 15 or 16 pound of really quite nice roach up to about pound so um, it's a method well worth exploring you tend to get far few nu nuisance species you know say compared to fishing maggot where you'll be picking up bleak little baby chub dace gudgeon uh, fish that don't weigh much um, you might get more bites but at the end of the day you might only ha end up with sort of six or seven pound of those small fish compared to potentially double or triple the weight if you get the roach going on the seed um, and they were nice fish last time I was down there I had to net nearly all of them um, so we'll um, we'll crack on with that we'll give that a go and fingers crossed it will be an informative little series of uh, of how to fish hemp effectively right I mean this this is the hemp I've got um, after doing a little bit of research this seems to be the best I could find it looks all right it's, it's a little bit on the small side in general um, I mean back in the day when you bought a sack of hemp this is what it was like um, but there's a lot of really poor quality uh, French hemp on the market at the moment which is tiny and it's actually too small for effective roach fishing um, this looks alright it's premium it cost a lot of money it was about 35 quid for 10 kilos so um, that's that's a lot of money but you know 10 kilos that's that's gonna do me probably for uh, best part of the season's hemp fishing so it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna work out about two quid a session or something which isn't too bad Right, let's get into the kitchen and start sorting this out. Right, in the kitchen. Um, various people have different ways of prepping hemp. I do it the simplest way, which is straight in a pan of boiling water for about half an hour. Quite a lot of people like to soak it for 12 hours or overnight in hot water before they do that. I've never found it makes any particular difference personally um, so I just leave that step out. What I'm going to do when this gets up to the boil um, is put about six of them that holds a pint 
So I'm going to go six pints of dry hemp straight in there. That's going to equate to around about nine pints of finished bait. Um, I'll put. I've actually run out, so I've only I've only put about a teaspoon of bicarb in there. Um, what the bicarb does is it it darkens the hemp off. You, you don't have to use it. If you don't use it, your hemp's going to be a kind of dark brown colour. If you do use it, it will it will blacken the hemp off a little bit. So it's going to be more like a um, dark brown black. Once it's in there get it up to a simmer and you've just got to, you've just got to keep checking it um, do your first check after about 25 minutes and essentially you don't want to overcook it you have some of the grains that split open the white kernels coming out you want as many as you can to be split but not showing too much of the white kernel and, and when we get to that stage I'll try and do a few close-ups of it so you can see it. Um, when we've finished and drained the bait as well I might put a couple of little additives in there um, salt being one and you can put essential oils in there if you fancy or, or even some other liquid additive um, that you might like. But let's get in there. So we're just going to whack six of these in. device um, that was two kettles of water I put in there and that is a stock pot I think don't quote me on this it's a 10 litre stock pot you can get obviously get bigger ones I've got a much bigger one for doing particle baits but this seems to be the sort of ideal size for my purposes when it comes to hemp give it a bit of a stir start the process basically a lot of it will be floating and as it cooks it's going to sink down into the liquid so again as you can see there's a lot of that is floating on the top there and it's still fairly pale just going to whack the timer on stick it on for 25 minutes turn the camera off and then we'll come back and have a bit of a look at that so best thing to store your hemp in is a food grade bucket with an airtight lid. If you just leave it in a bag open, um, you quite often get these little sort of weevily mite things in there that will over time just start chewing their way through it. Um, it's always best before you fill up your bucket is to give it a rinse out with boiling water to kill any potential um, insect eggs in there or you can give it a spritz with a kitchen cleaner um, but I prefer boiling water because it's chemical free I'm just going to do that now make sure you, you dry it out thoroughly um, otherwise moisture in there is going to cause you problems that's just getting on to the simmer now. Turn the gas down to about halfway. So what I'm going to do with this big bucket here is dump about half a kettle of water in there, put the lid on, go outside, give it a shake. Uh, what normally happens is because it's hot water and you're shaking it, it expands rapidly and it basically pops. So it like creates a little explosion pops the lid off hence why I do it outside and not in the kitchen oh 
that steam is basically going to kill any little nasties in there, any bacteria, any bugs, any little weevil eggs, anything like that. And give it a thorough dry and you're ready to put your hemp in there. Alright, just going out in the garden to blow this up. Alright, that's done. Dried out in the sun, best way to do it. Um, obviously, dirty dish cloths and things covered in bacteria, so best to avoid. Um, whack it in there. I'm just going to leave it in the bag. And then my lid. Just going to write the date. Oh. And what it is. 20, 22, him. Okay. Hello. And for about 10 minutes. See, it's just a nice gentle simmer and most of it is starting to cook and sink now. One thing to note is it's the, it's the larger grains, the ones you want for hook bait, and they tend to be the, the last to split. So when you're checking it, you might be like, yeah, that's nothing done. But you might actually find that all your larger bits haven't split yet. So that, that's like the most important thing, is you want 95% 95% split at least, including the majority of the big ones. Um, that way you've not only got slightly more cooked, smaller grains, which are perfectly good for loose feed, or your big ones, that are what you want for the hook, are going to be bang on. Uh, you, you just want the kernel to split open. It'll probably still look kind of greeny brown in there. Like the little white kernel bit won't be popping out. It'll, it'll still be fairly smooth, but it will be split open. And that little split is just enough to just wedge your hook in there, and that's that's how you hook it basically. We're nearly there. When you're actually fishing, you know, you, you dip into your little pot, you grab about eight little grains, and pick the one you want, the one looks best for the hook, put it on. If you, if you grab ten grains out of there and only seven of them are, are split, and the three nicest ones aren't, then it's a little bit annoying because it gives you more stuff to sort of sieve through, and that's time wasted. Time wasted is fishing on the core. You know, it's, it's how, uh, it stacks up at the end of the day. I declare that done. Let's take it over to the sink, drain it off. We've got this quite handy little one that just sort of clips on to the rinsing sink, which is quite good. See, it's mostly sunk. There are, you do get these odd sort of, I don't know whether they're just immature bits of seed or what. You always get like a little scummy floaty selection on the top. You can actually just tip them off. They're no good to anyone. They're just going to drift off downstream and track bleak, so get a shot of those. Some people like to keep the water, I don't bother. Ooh. 
you'll be able to see this focuses on this, I don't know if it will. Grain like that is perfect. It's got a little split about half a millimetre wide in it. Let's see. Nearly all of these perfect for hooking. Right, bag it up. Best bags I've found are these Zup Zip bags. Get them off Amazon. You can find them in quite a lot of supermarkets. They've got they've got like a double um, press seal on them and they're quite durable. A lot of bags these days aren't particularly thick plastic. So when you put them in the freezer they, they can actually crack and then you've just got a freezer full of crappy little bits of hemp and rubbish. Uh, which is quite annoying. <coughs> Grab your pint pot again. One and a half. That should be enough for a session, one and a half pints. If you're going fishing tomorrow, just lay it on the counter, let it cool down, and then chuck it in the fridge, or, in, or straight into your cool bag, whatever. If you're not going fishing tomorrow, do the same thing and then when they're cool, stack them up in the freezer and they're all portioned out, ready to go. You squeeze all the air out of those, as they cool they'll actually vacuum pack themselves anyway. So, as you can see that six pint of raw hemp, see how that one's, that's vacuum packed itself now. Um, that's that equates to five bags. This has got a little bit more than a pint and a half in because the little extra bit I split between them. Or rather, what 1.6 pints in five bags. And that should be enough generally for a session on a lake or a slow moving river. You you might need more in a really like swift flowing river where a lot of the bait just gets washed away. But if you're confident that that's getting down to the bottom in your swim, where you're fishing, if you're using more than that, you're probably overfeeding. Um, it's, it's very, very rare. Certainly, certainly when pole fishing on a slow moving water or still water, to need more than a pint and a half, you just don't. Right, leave them there, cool down. All the little scribbly excess bits I'm going to chuck in the pond for the fish. So, that's your hemp done, sorted, as I say. If you're using it tomorrow, or the ne well, next sort of three days actually, to be honest, bang it in the fridge. Uh, if you're going to be using it in a week or two, stick it in the freezer. It, it, put it in the freezer has no real impact on it at all. It's perfectly fine. Um, you can even refreeze it again and reuse it again. Obviously, every time you defrost it and thaw it, thaw it out and freeze it, it, it does degrade slightly. Um, so, after a couple of threes and freezes and thaws, uh, I'd say just use it for loose feed when you tench fish in or in your spot mix or something like that. It won't be it won't be premium roach bait anymore. Cool. All right. Let's uh, put that away, and then I'll prepare some wheat and some tares. That'll be in the next video.